I'm James Spann. This is the afternoon edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for Tuesday, the 9th of February. Uh, you know, yesterday we talked about temperatures falling during the day today, winding up in the 30s. Well, by golly, we're in the 30s. It's cold, it's windy, blustery, and an end-of-the-week storm raising a lot of questions. So let's take a look. First off, the uh, Skycam shots coming from Decatur. Barely above freezing up in the Tennessee Valley. They're at 34 with a brisk north wind. It looks awfully raw, doesn't it? Kind of like the weekend we endured. Mount Sheha in the clouds, as they often are. The elevation there at 2,400 feet. And uh, that's uh, the camera on top of the restaurant. And down in uh, Selma, that's a look at the historic Edmund Pettus Bridge crossing the Alabama River. And even down there, it's starting to get pretty cold. Well, there you go. Storm number one is leaving. Storm number two is out there in California. That'll be our end of the week system. But uh, in the wake of the first storm, it's just cold. Look at Coleman sitting at 33. You factor in a north wind. Feels more like 25. Uh, Gadsden and Birmingham in the 30s. And we started off this day well in the upper 40s. Birmingham was at 48 degrees at 6 o'clock. So we've dropped almost 10 degrees. And a pretty good freeze coming up tonight. Most folks will be in the mid-20s by daybreak tomorrow. Well, there's our messy weather. That's rain on the South Atlantic coast. That is snow up north. That is snowing in Indianapolis, Detroit, Cleveland, Pittsburgh. And uh, that thing could be a blizzard for New York City over the next 36 hours. And that will impact Philadelphia, Washington, and Baltimore. They're still buried in snow by the weekend storm. Uh, there's the snow outlook for the rest of today and tonight. You can see the Max is sitting up there right over New York City and down to Philadelphia and Baltimore and Washington. In day two, the whole thing begins to wind down. You see that little circle over Texas. That's the beginning of the end of the week system. And again, that raises a whole lot of questions. We'll see if we can answer some of those. There's the overall QPF. This is valid through Sunday morning at 6 o'clock. Heaviest precipitation in the Gulf. And that's showing uh, one to two inches down there up this way. Amounts of, well, one half inch. Now, this started this morning at 6 o'clock, so a lot of this is the rain that came down this morning. And uh, Friday, whatever falls, probably will be snow, but the bullseye could be south of us. We've talked about that, and let's just take a look here. This is the 12Z GFS at uh, noon tomorrow. Storm number one on the Atlantic coast, storm number two digging down into Baja. Uh, down below that, look at that surface low just east of the Jersey coast. 984 millibars. That is a wind and snow event that will be talked about for a while for New York City and Philadelphia and Atlantic City. Uh, D.C. kind of on the southern edge of that, but they could see 9, 10 inches of snow easily and Baltimore as well. But again, that is a screaming blizzard there for parts of the upper Atlantic coast. Down here, I don't know if we see sun tomorrow. You see the cold air advection uh, flurries to the north. We'll say clearing, but I don't know if that'll happen. Like this past weekend, you know, you try and be optimistic, and sometimes it just doesn't work out in this deal. And there's our new storm coming into Texas. Uh, Thursday, cold and dry, but clouds will likely increase in advance of that end-of-the-week storm, and uh, that's suggesting uh, maybe some freezing rain or snowflakes in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. It'd be pretty light, the better moisture down south. And Friday, the GFS says no snow. They moved the surface load down there toward the island of Cuba, almost like a tropical system and uh, keeping the deeper moisture offshore. And that is very anomalous compared to what we have seen all season with these El Nino storms. And true, this will take a, f a southern track. We know that but because of the cold air, but I'm not so sure that's right. We'll peek at the NAM, the North American Mesoscale model. It's pretty far south, but not as south as the GFS. The GFS is a clear outlier. Uh, this suggesting some of the better snow uh, down there just north of Mobile, maybe places like uh, Chatham, and Monroeville and Atmore and Andalusia. Wouldn't that be something if they wound up with a couple of inches of snow on Friday and we got nothing but a flake or two up here? And that's not totally out of the question. But look at the Canadian. This is the 12Z run, valid at uh, 6 o'clock Friday evening. It's got the surface low just south of Apalachicola, and it's very wet. And the uh, 540 line, which can be a pretty decent rain snow line, running from Mobile up to about uh, Eufaula. And that would suggest a big snow for the U.S. 80 corridor. And quite frankly, that, I think, it better suits the pattern and the climatology with this kind of setup here. And I think we'll probably, for now, hit it that way in the forecast. The best chance of accumulating snow could very well be along U.S. 80. That's Demopolis, Selma, Montgomery, Auburn, Opelika. Now, for Birmingham, sure, that, that, that prints uh, one... The two inches of snow up here. 
and, and down there, it's printing, what, five inches for Montgomery? Uh, but remember, this is a little bit of an outlier. Let's look at the European. Sometimes a compromise is best, and I think that solution looks pretty good. It's got the surface low far south, but enough moisture for some light snow in Birmingham. The better chance of accumulating snow, again, would be perhaps U.S. 80, or maybe even a bit farther south. So uh, I think for now we'll mention a chance of light snow for Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, Anniston. Just light snow on Friday. The better chance of accumulating snow near U.S. 80. Demopolis, Montgomery, Auburn, Opelika, Selma, and maybe somewhere down there toward U.S. 84. That's Monroeville and Evergreen. Uh, there could be some accumulating snow. But remember, let's get this thing out of here. It's on the way out, but now our new system is getting into the American Upper Air Network. These models will be a lot more consistent and reliable on the OZ run tonight and the 12Z run tomorrow morning. So we'll feel much more confident in dealing with this uh, uh, tomorrow morning. Look at the thickness values. This is off the uh, GFS. This valid 6 o'clock Friday evening. Not quite as cold as recent runs, but I don't think... The model is handing the low-level cold air very well. That, that low-level uh, black thickness line is too far north based on the snow cover across the country. Uh, whatever, we're pretty comfortable. If anything falls Friday, it's going to be snow for Birmingham in the, the metro here. It's just a matter of moisture. And we can speculate all day long, but again, at this phase of the game, there's just not a whole lot of skill in getting too specific. We'll do that tomorrow. Uh, Saturday, it's just cold and dry. Look at the surface low is over Nassau in the Bahamas. Goodness. Sunday, look at that uh, disturbance rolling down the backside of the trough. Very strong clipper, and down below that, that's going to squeeze out some light snow, if this is right. Uh, pretty strong surface low uh, on the Ohio River. And I think for Sunday, we need to mention a chance of snow flurries or light snow with that. And not a lot, but uh, definitely there. And then Monday, look at the cold air just dropping south. We'll be below freezing all day, if that's right. Windy, cold, high of about 32 or 33. Uh, goodness. And then Tuesday, we uh, moderate some after a very cold morning on Tuesday. Uh, let's go out there toward the end of the forecast for you. Snow fans, you'll like this one. Southern Stream, very active. Uh, Vortmax coming through here and a whopper of a snowstorm. But, yeah, you know this is pure voodoo. But something like this is certainly possible. The pattern certainly supports that. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this afternoon. We'll have notes on the blog, the next video here by 7 a.m. tomorrow. And if you're local to us, we invite you to watch us on television this evening, ABC 3340 News at 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful evening, and God bless. Each day there are new stories to tell about the people who live here and the place we call home. All of the faces that I see All of the places close to Sharing your stories on ABC 3340, Alabama's news leader.